So at the moment, perhaps the main environmental concern for our fresh waters is coming from climate change. And climate change is not just global warming, it's also changes in precipitation in different regions. So for example, um, as climates get warmer into the future, this will cause, for example, the Asian monsoon to change when it falls most in different countries. And so in terms of freshwater security, this is going to also you know, cause problems for potentially billions of people. Climate change is, is just the latest kind of threat to fresh waters. So I would say that in the 1980s, it was to do with um, freshwater acidification and acid rain. In the 1990s, it was really to do with um, nutrient enrichment from, from, from agriculture. And then in, in the sort of 1990s going into 2000, when we realized that global warming was perhaps the temperature the highest they've been maybe for the last 1,000 years, then global warming became kind of sort of the major um, environmental concern. So climate change can affect uh, fresh water in many ways. Um, so in some of my own research that I work on, for example, in Lake Baikal and in, in other lakes in, in, in Russia and, and in southern Siberia, here the lakes freeze over every year. And that freezing over every year means that the lakes contain uh, species that are really uniquely adapted to those kind of situations. If you imagine that as global warming gets warmer in the future, then the ice cover on those lakes is going to be there for a shorter period of time and the ice will become thinner. So for many species that might be problematic. So for example, we have on Lake Baikal, we've got the, this, uh, uh, the world's only freshwater seal. Um, it's uniquely uh, tied to the ice in the lake. and the ice starts to disappear, then the ecology of that species is going to change as well, and that will have a cascading effect uh, elsewhere. And we know from many studies around the world now that um, ice cover, uh, the thickness of ice, the duration of ice in lakes is getting shorter with every decade that passes. So that's going to cause major changes to the ecosystems. We don't really know what's going to happen. We, we can predict what's going to happen. Um, global warming also causes lakes themselves to warm up during the summertime, for example. Um, and that can be problematic because when lake water becomes warmer, the, that warmer water uh, becomes lighter and it sits on top of the lake. And that means that um, some species like these one-celled uh, uh, algae called diatoms or the glass shell, they become too heavy and they sink out of the, the, the light zone and they start to die off. And in their place, we have these smaller algae. And these smaller algae can form dangerous algal blooms, such as cyanobacteria. Um, and if you have an algal bloom, that means that the algae bloom, but when the algae die, they start to respire more and they use up all the oxygen, and that can cause dead zones, again, in, in lakes. And if you've got no oxygen, you've got a dead zone, then that means that fish can no longer live there as, as well. And so we're seeing in, in many lakes now that global warming is causing these dead zones to become more common and that could be problematic. And from a recent survey done of, of lakes from around the world, um, the majority of them are heating up in the summertime. And again, we don't really know what's going to happen with them all. The, the responses will be different depending on, on, on where in, in the world that you are. If you go to tropical lakes, for example, they're already very warm. And so if you imagine that global warming is going to warm these lakes even further, some of the species that are uniquely adapted to growing in these warm waters, if it gets even warmer, that may be at the physiological um, tolerance of some species, and then those species might start to die out. And what we're seeing in some of the tropical uh, uh, lakes in East Africa, these kind of these, these, these large deep tectonic lakes, is that already um, we're seeing some loss of species, and we're seeing some uh, loss of productivity in those lakes that, are, that is linked directly uh, uh, to uh, global warming. Um, some lakes that exist in regions that are semi-arid, so they're reliant on sort of, uh, sort of precipitation, evaporation, etc., sort of in, in desert regions, basically. If we're going to have changes in rainfall, and say we have less rainfall, then those lakes are going to start to dry up. And if they start to dry up, that means they become more salty. And they become more salty, 
then they become too salty for organisms to live there. And then they start to, those organisms start to die out. And that's exactly like the RLC that, that we saw there, all the fish died out because the lake shrunk to such an amount, uh, it, it became too salty. And then it becomes too salty, it's a problem that humans can't drink it either. So we have these different things that climate change is going to affect lakes in the future in different parts in the world, and that can be problematic. Um, it can get worse. <laughs> so we know that, for example, nutrients cause a problem for lakes and that they cause algal blooms. When a lake warms up, that can also cause algal blooms. So if you've got nutrients coming into the lake from agriculture and you've got the lakes are warm at the same time, we have these interacting stressors that can actually make the situation even worse. And so in many lakes that we're seeing, for example, uh, in South America, Lake Valencia, we're seeing the effects of this, where we've got these massive algal blooms, we've got these really rapidly um, uh, increasing dead zones, and then sort of uh, 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 death of fish and um, other organisms. And there's been a really, um, so I'm saying a nice case study, but it's not a nice case study, it's a novel case study. Um, and this is uh, Lake Pupo in South America. Um, it's very sensitive to changes uh, uh, in, in, in evaporation. Um, but also, in, in, in the lake's catchment, there's lots of mining going on there. And because of lots of mining, that mining is producing lots of toxic heavy metals that's getting into the lake via the rivers. So the lake is becoming really stressed. And there's been uh, well-documented uh, changes in lake water quality, which is problematic for the people that rely on the lake, but also is causing species to become threatened and they're starting to die off as well. Um, and then in about sort of lake sort of uh, 2014, 2015, there's a major extreme event in the climate linked to El Nino. And that caused the lake to heat up a lot, and I mean a lot. And that caused the lake to uh, uh, have these algal blooms, which meant that the auction was lost. And because of the unique condition at the time, the wind blew this, the water that had no oxygen into the coastline where all the fish were living. And that meant millions of fish died out as well. So here we have an interaction of climate and human activity that are interacting together that's causing conditions to become even worse. And with global warming, we're seeing temperatures sort of increase gradually. But what the big unknown is are these extreme events. So these big El Nino events that happened just uh, two years ago, um, where we have these like, very extreme other precipitation happen, happening or very extreme increases in temperature. And that is a great unknown. That is going to really disrupt the ecology in these lakes. And I think that is some of the work, where a lot of the work is going on at the moment. But yeah, that is probably the scary thing that's happening, I think, in lakes at the moment. I think people can adapt to changes in, in around lakes and in rivers if the change is gradual. So lakes are heating up, but it's, you know, it will heat, they'll heat up over decades. Um, and I think they'll just have to adapt their economies because they can't control global warming. It's when you have an extreme event. Say you have massive flood, for example. So um, where we have uh, uh, an, an increase in hurricane intensity or an increase in uh, uh, typhoon intensity in, in Southeast Asia, when that brings vast amounts of water coming in, that water uh, hits the mountains, hits the catchment, rivers burst their banks, they bring in lots and lots of uh, uh, um, soils, contaminants, etc., into the lake that you can't prepare for, um, or it's less easy to prepare for that, I think. And so I think a, a lot of the work that's going on at the moment is in looking at um, adaptation uh, uh, to these extreme events, um, looking at uh, disaster resilience as well, to try to work out, well, you know, if we do have an increase in intensity of hurricanes or, 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 or typhoons or monsoons, how can we adapt to that? How can, how can populations adapt to that? Um, lake levels might be increasing. That means that you don't build beside a lake. You don't build on a river floodplain if you think that you're going to have more flash floods that are going to come from global warming. Because, of course, as the atmosphere warms up, it can hold more moisture. But then that moisture's got to go somewhere. And that's why we're seeing, even in southern England, these, these you know, major rainstorms that happen that, that cause flooding. So I think there are, there are local adaptations that people can make don't build on floodplains. You know, those are some of the things that are key. 
But of course that takes a lot of will, it takes a lot of governments to make decisions that will have an impact uh, on policy decades in advance and governments can be slow to do that, I think, which I think is a bit unfortunate.